All right, hi, welcome to the live session. It's uh, June 19th, happy Juneteenth. Um, all right, Alex, your, um, new, your new project. You wanna tell me a little bit about it first? Um, yeah, so basically I had connected with this artist um, on ArtStation, or not ArtStation, LinkedIn. Um, and I really liked this project. So I was, he, he and I, I contacted him today and he says that he, he likes where it's at. Um, I was just not wondering if I could push it any further. Um, I know there's always more that you can do. Um, but yeah, uh, it's basically supposed to be the scientist um, doing some calculation in outer space and things are not going exactly as according to plan. They never do. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I mean, I, overall, it's pretty nicely done. I, I have some, I do have some notes. So I always have notes. Um, the, the, the big thing here, I think, is that hierarchically in the frame, the first thing that I, I kind of see is not his face. Okay. And that has a lot to do with, uh, some of it is, his, you know, his overall values are a little dark, right? Mm -hmm. and, and he definitely has kind of a, a, a dingy thing going on. And, you know, a lot of times, we call this in, in, in the production, like just beard shadow. Yeah, five o'clock shadow. I mean, it, it isn't really, but um, it's the darkness that gets in there that really starts to make it look funny. Mm -hmm. um, so I think overall, like his head, his face needs to read better. And then specifically, these areas need to be lifted. And then within that, I think also, like his eyes are very bright. Okay. Um, it, it's more that they're just they're just flashed so much that there's no shadowing on them at all. There should be a little bit. Um, but also, I mean, it, it's okay in general that his eyes are the brightest things on his face and probably in the frame. But in this case, since you know he's an old guy uh, with white hair, and this is kind of similar to Bipol's um, scene. If if this were actual hair. I think it would be reacting differently. You'd be getting more spec on it, stuff like that. But since it's since it's um, uh, just you know geometry, it's just pl uh, plastic basically. Mm -hmm. It's not picking up light the same way. So yeah. these eyebrows aren't too bad, but the mustache is really kind of dark. Okay. As is the rest of his hair, right? So like basically all his hair, um, including his eyebrows, maybe a little bit. But mostly his hair and his mustache should should, should come up, All right? Okay. So that'll make this whole whole head will be a little bit brighter. With the brightest parts being um, first his his white hair, and then brighter than that his eyes. Mm -hmm. All right, that's that's sort of the level that you want. Now, also there are issues with other things competing with this. Um, this this chair is pretty hot, right? Okay. I mean, it's it's, it's because of its color, you look over there, but it's also quite bright. And um, the other thing is the shirt. The shirt's really bright, right? I mean, it's 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 right up there with his eyes. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be an issue um, there. Um, now, I I took this frame from not your latest version, which seems like you put some you did some grading on it. You um, you know, you add a little contrast and maybe a uh, a vignette or something as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean that I think that overall that looked better. But mm -hmm. um, these the comments that I just made still stand. And I think also just some little things you could do. Um, this this glow around the window mm -hmm. feels a little. It, it's a little too strong. It's a little too short. Mm -hmm. now, I'm assuming that this this thing is supposed to be some kind of force field or something. Yeah. It's not like an actual window. Yeah. Okay, in that case, you know, I think, oops, I think, uh, sorry, that's my paint on it. Like, you could glow these things a little bit, or actually quite a bit, right? Like, mm -hmm. they're almost, I think there's a little bit on there, but you could go way heavier and have most of the glow be here, not, and, and less of it or not as bright there, because it's, it's not clear how it's spilling to this side. Mm -hmm. I like that there's something there. It would bounce around. But you okay. can definitely, you know, make this a lot hotter. I think. Okay. And you know, you might want to do the same thing with some of these, some of these uh, 
jelly beans. You know, I don't know. L less so there, but also like on the keyboard itself, that could glow a little bit too. Okay. Now that brings up this question: like, what is this reflection here? It's uh, it's glowing just a little bit. I didn't push it too hot, um, because the first time I had done it, it was it was way hot, and I may have toned it down uh too much. Yeah, well, it, it just, it looks odd. Like it, you know, if it's, it, is it like uh, LEDs under the keyboard kind of thing? Yeah, that's exactly what I was going for. Yeah, I think either it needs to spread out more mm -hmm. or or be really tight and hot. But I, I don't think it's really helping you. That's the thing. Okay. Primarily, you know, because it's, it's right now it feels like a weird reflection that doesn't quite make sense. Mm -hmm. because you have a dark keyboard mm -hmm. right. so I, I i don't think it i think you should just get rid of it and glow up the actual you know sort of the keypad mm -hmm. because you know that'll be actually more interesting anyway mm -hmm. and, and, and definitely clear okay so i did do a paint over of what i was talking about mm -hmm. oh i changed the color of his shirt mm -hmm. i don't know if that's an option and you know this this didn't doesn't look particularly good because it's all done in comp and you know it's very bright, mm -hmm. so it was a little it's a little hard, but uh, the the important thing is like in this hierarchy this this chair is pushed down, the shirt is pushed down, and his head is reading, you know, much more clearly and it's 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 the pr predominant thing in frame. Okay. this right so he's dark and shadowing in his face and he's his the reading of his head is competing with his both his shirt and the chair okay and i think pretty much all of this can be handled in comp with your aovs mm -hmm. yeah with your crypto mat sorry um the shirt is the iffiest part because it's it's getting crushed and weird in there but but you know changing the color and changing the value definitely helps a lot because all of a sudden now, you know your your focus is just absolutely on his face. Okay. No, that makes sense. All right, so I will post this for you later. So you you basically said darken up the head hair, darken outfit, and then I'm also gonna say, um, so brighten, brighten up the head hair. Oh. Yeah, brighten up the head here. I'm sorry, I said that backwards. Yeah. Yeah, I apologize. Thank you. But yeah, darken the chair, darken the shirt, or or do something to the shirt. Like, the, the, the problem is it's a white shirt and he has white hair. Okay. So even if it were, you know, a pink or a blue or, or anything, even if it's at that value, if it's too hard to change the value, um, that would help just separate it. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, if, if you can get it, darker then it helps a lot okay it's just within you know as a as a comp process it's not so easy because you're taking something that's that's borderline breaking i mean it's pretty hot there and trying to trying to darken everything and still keep some some spec which i didn't do a very good job of but mm -hmm. um, you know yeah, I have the crypto mats this time, so I think it should be a little bit easier. And I had everything separated out, so okay. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, another thing you might want to like these rims mm -hmm. feel a little implausible coming from this. Mm -hmm. A little, little too strong. And you know, again, I don't think it's really helping you anyway. So mm -hmm. either neutralize it a lot. And have have the warm one just be here, or kill it altogether. Okay. Nope. Sounds good. All right. Cool. Thank you. Sure thing. Let's see. So Michelle is here and Angela is here. All right, Angela. I didn't do any paint over stuff for yours. Um. Let's see.
But why don't you tell me a little bit about this? I, I don't, uh, we were talking over, talking this over a little bit before you came in, but I, I don't really know what the, what the assignment is here. So I'm not quite sure what to tell you. Uh, the, the assignment is to light a scene that they provided uh -huh. uh, using white material and whatever reference that you choose. Okay. Oh, I see. And so you got this Blade Runner one. Uh, so tell me about what you see in this scene that you are trying to replicate. So the, the two main key lights in the frame, I, I just used the two main key lights for the entire scene. And these lights are, what, what, what render are you using? Um, I was using 3ds Max Ardo. With Arno, okay. So are these emissive materials on tubes or is it a, is it a mesh light or what are you using? Uh, it's an emissive on two tubes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And is there any, what, what's making the green happen? Uh, I have two spotlights uh, using uh, with green color. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I think you've done a pretty good job of, of mimicking this. I think probably in, in the scene there, like if, if you had, are your two green lights the same color and value? Yeah, it's the same. I would, you know, maybe as an experiment, try changing one of them to be maybe a little cooler. Right. So that's not just uniformly green. You know, there's a, there's a little bit more in it, like maybe some of the 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 darkest areas here. The core has a, a touch of blue to it. You know, uh -huh. it's, it's a little hard to see here because I think, um, I mean, De Deakins does a lot of color uh, color grading in in uh, DI and in digital intermediate post post processing as well. So when this was shot, there may have been you know some coolness as well as a green fill light, as well as the, the hot fluorescence. Um, but I'm not quite sure. But I, I think, you know, it's, it's worth experimenting with because I mean, you, you mostly have it. Um, it's, it's a little hard to tell here. Um, but yeah, try, try at least changing the value of one of those one of your spots, your, your fill lights, and see what kind of thing that does. And then and then change the hue a little bit too. Okay, sure. And um, I mean, you've got a lot of nice, you know, uh, um, bounce and, and uh, global illumination stuff going on here. Uh, are, are you required, is this the exact scene that you're supposed to use or can you drag in other stuff or how does that work? I think you can add in other stuff as long as it's uh, white material. Okay. In that case, why don't you try this? I mean, part of part of what is happening here is there are these tubes, but they're along a wall, basically, right? And mm -hmm. because of that, the global illumination from this, the light is bouncing off the walls and back onto the character. So. I mean, your, your, your character, your sphere is getting lit directly by, by the emissive tube. But if there was a wall, oops, I can't draw on this. If there was a wall like here as well, then what these lights, and you know, these can be a little bit away from the wall. These lights strike the wall, which kicks light back. And that will do interesting things to this as well. And maybe some of these other objects, you know, depending on where your wall is or, or place some other stuff and see what it does. Like stick a cylinder here where, where um, what's his name is <laughs> and see how um, it re he reacts to the secondary bounces off the wall. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah. All right, great. Great, thank you. Sure thing. Okay, is Chandler here? No. Um, well, Michelle, you're here, so let's go to yours. Hi, Ruby. Oops. All right, Michelle, new, new project. Tell me about it. Oh, uh, this was a project that I, I only caught maybe the last week of the previous uh, critique. So I only managed to do one iteration of it. Mm -hmm. um, so what attracted to, uh, what I liked about the reference was that the, I, I like the really gradual grade, like gradation of the light going from light to dark from the window. Mm -hmm. um, what I found was really tricky was that I couldn't quite replicate the strong uh, volume metrics without completely overblowing, uh, completely overexposing my scene. Um, I also tried some new techniques that I haven't done before by trying to do some, uh, what was it, edge, edge, uh, the, uh, yeah, the, the blooming around the, blooming mm -hmm. around the silhouette. Yeah. Um, I do have some questions about whether my textures were looking right, because it seemed like the specular on the robot was really strong. Mm -hmm. from my window light and it doesn't seem like that's the correct direction where these these kinds of highlights should be but that, that's what my key light seems to indicate okay um hard to say um i mean he could be reacting to your fill lights as well you know mm. oh, probably is my guess so um what what how are you lighting the rest of the room, the interior of the room? Uh, I tried a sky dome, but it didn't seem like it, it from it doesn't seem to actually really hit the inside of the room. Right. Unless I hit made the values really high. So I just kind I just have I have fill lights pointed towards the two different corners of the room, the left and the right. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, let me open back up because I don't quite remember how I set this up. Um, and what is this reference from? Uh, it was, I think it, it was a, I think it was a 2011, 2012 short. It might have had like an Academy Award for short animation, I think. Oh, uh, is it Bill Joyce? Uh, Joyce? I'm not sure. It feels that way. I don't know why she's black and white. <laughs> I guess it's a story point. No. Yes, yes. Oh, uh, another thing I realized is that I really wanted to illuminate the girl some more, but the actual scene itself, since her back is almost touching the wall, mm -hmm. I I had to add, I had to fake some bounce light off the wall in order to uh, give her some light. Otherwise, I was otherwise my scene kept on. Otherwise, she kept on being really dark. Mm -hmm. In well, my that, scene. that was a good move. I think you can go further with that, actually. Yeah. All right. So um, the, the 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 first thing I noticed um, looking at this scene, the shot is uh, that's it, that I I I found it. I didn't really understand what was going on because it's very hard to read this guy and by all rights, he should be the focus of this, mm. right? I mean, he's kind of the star of this scene. Um, whatever he's doing, I don't know if he's reading to her or, you know, they're interacting, but by placement and everything else, um, you know, the fact that he has a, an open book, it, it, it seems pretty clear that he's he should be the central focus. But, you know, all of this um, volumetrics is, is it's kind of really washing them out mm. now you still want it because it's important so i think what you need to do is cheat cheat it a little bit so there's a little bit less of it on him and you can you know read him 
uh, a little clearer. Uh, or you could, you know, just saturate him and maybe contrast him up a little bit within the, the god ray. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of things you could do, but but um, regardless of how you choose to do it, I think that's that's the most important thing. Um, so so that's first, and and kind of similarly, um, she's actually the darkest thing in frame, which doesn't quite seem right either. I mean, I think you're you were definitely your instincts were right to to get some more bounce into her and lighten her up. If she was even darker than this before, that that's pretty bad. Um, I think she needs to go lighter. Both that, really, these two need to balance out a little bit more. So they're they're closer in in value and in hue and everything else, with with this guy still being dominant. Mm. The other thing is, all right. So you do have a central zone that reads pretty well, right? Because of the volumetrics and 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 the, the brightness. Um, but even still, like these areas, they they feel a little too bright to me. I mean, they're they're drawing my eye. Yeah. You know, because they're 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 quite detailed and there's a lot of contrast like these darks are really dark you know and then you know the the specs are you know, fairly well i'm not gonna say they're bright but there definitely are bright areas there um so i mean overall uh a there's there's a lot of contrast in here that that's drawing your eye due to the detail and um overall it's probably just too bright compared to this still. Mm. Now, it's tricky because you don't want these areas, which are already pretty dark, um, going even darker. But what you want is to, to reduce the contrast in here and have it one way or the other, whether it's a matter of value or hue, have these areas sort of sink back some so that this is the most important part in frame. Within that, this is, right? So hierarchy-wise, on, on a broad compositional level, you want, you want to see this first, then within that, you want to, oops, you want to see these guys together, or maybe more like these guys, and then within that, you want to see him more. So, um, you know, I mean, you were talking about trying to get a sky dome in here. Again, I think that's the right thing. Um, if it's not working, uh, whatever fill lights you have, which you, you know, lighting these areas, I would cool them off a lot. So that, because I mean, this is, it's the other thing is, it, everything is very warm. Right. Yeah. And it's all kind of like reddish warm. It's not like red pink. Like I would actually like in your in your reference, these areas are much more um, you know, yellower. Right. Yours is everything's a little ruddy. It's a little red. Um so I would consider trying to get a little bit more yellow in here. That might also help um, differentiate these areas a little bit. Okay, so hang on, let me get rid of this. Okay, so I did a I did do a paint over of this to do some of these things. All right, so these air, the sides are muted now. There's less mm -hmm. contrast, and I, I push some blue into it. So now there's a, a difference in hue between sort of the central focus and the sides. I mean, the sides are definitely kind of going away now. They're, they're you know, they're they're there. You can see the stuff, but you're not you're not focusing on it. I I did pop this guy out, maybe a little too much, you know. You can do that to taste for sure because it's 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 tricky. You do want him in the volumetric still and 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 reading. And I also like I I 
I reduced the, the darks and the contrast on her, kind of just letting, letting, you know, the volume, which isn't really there, but a sense of that and the same colors wash over her. So, so these guys are a little bit closer together, um, value wise, but with this guy still dominant. Mm. Um, I, his, this eye was getting really hot, so I kind of toned it down. I mean, what, it, it's a little weird. This isn't working. It's all Photoshop. But um, I mean, ideally, you know, this guy, I mean, he does have a, a pupil of sorts. And I think he probably has one on this side, too. If you can get those to read better, then, you know, you start to, there's, there's implied eye contact, which helps the scene, too. You know, like that versus this. It's it's yeah. If there's anything you can do to get you know this pupil to read clear and to find one here, that's going to help. Because we're you know we're just we're we're hardwired to to find eyes and things. Um, I didn't change any of the hue here, but I think you probably could, you know, make that a lot yellower and that probably would help. Or not, maybe not a lot, I wouldn't say a lot yellow, a little bit of yellow. But, you know, I mean, I even had a little bit of the, the blue light, the cool light that's here, um, getting into like a little bit on the back of the, of the shades and, you know, like this, this, um, a lightning of her is has a little bit of blue in it too, and also like even even this face of of the thing they're sitting on cooled it off a little bit. And I think I um, I just sort of fuzzed this out a little bit. And you added on top of your volumetrics, added some, you know, as if the dust here is getting um, illuminated a little bit. It just, it just, it helps emphasize the area around the window, not just the volumetrics coming through. But the big thing here is it, it's really strongly reinforcing this, the center of composition first and then the center within the center. Hmm. Would it help if I did a bit of a vignette in yeah, comp? Yeah. Vignettes always help. It's it's the easiest um, trick to folk getting adding focus to your 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 frame. Is it okay to do half of half of one just on the one side? Because I I steered away from doing that because. The left side, a, a, a vignette would interfere with the volumetrics, which is why I avoided doing that. Well, you know, it probably will work anyway, but you can, you can cheat it a little bit. Mm. Oops. I mean, that's not getting in the way. Yeah. And it's actually, it's kind of nice that it dims the corner of this a little bit because it just brings your eye back. Okay. Okay. Um, any other questions or thoughts about this? Mm, no, uh, I'm uh, the feedback gives me a good direction to head in. And I realized that since I did this project earlier and I was unfamiliar with Arnold, I didn't actually turn on Ray uh, 
ray depth. So that was probably the issue with my sky dome, to be honest. Yeah, yeah maybe. It, maybe it might be affecting the robot's eyes too. Mm. All right, well, that's good. Cool, great. Uh, let's see, Ruby, you, you don't have anything new, do you? Not today, no. Okay. Um, well, Michelle, let's go to your other one. Okay. All right, I did not do a lot of work on this, but... Um, that was yeah. a bit last minute, thank you. Yeah, uh, but yes, it's definitely looking better, you know. Uh, whatever you did to get these reflections better. The water looked better. I know this says previous version. It's not exactly what I had last time. Um, mm. Some Something cleared up. Is is this the ray depth thing, maybe? Did you do that here as well? Uh, I think I just changed the uh, specularity. Okay. I, I, just mess with, I just messed with the materials a lot. All right. It's an improvement for sure. And... Um, you know, the lighting is definitely improving as well. So, um, you know, I like, oops, 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 oops. I definitely was trying to light, uh, have brighter spots on the skin, but mm -hmm. then I realized uh, both of the characters, the brightest parts of their skin, the character, is essentially their arms, not their faces. Yeah, but that's true. I'm kind of already locked into this direction. Well, I mean, we we can cheat fills and rims and stuff. You know, I think it'll be okay. Like this, this. What am I doing wrong here? Yeah, I did try to make the actual nose and mouth area of the boy glow a bit more compared to the his eyes and his ears, just so it kind of looks like there's actually a bit of a shadow from mm -hmm. the hat. And I tried to add the caustics, but I'm kind of having difficulty with that because I wanted to add white glowing caustics, yeah. whereas it just seems like I'm just making it darker. And I think that's probably just a problem with me figuring out how to use a gobo. Right. Uh, there was an attempt. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, I, I, I see it. the The noise pattern is a little. The frequency's too high. High. <laughs> you never get that. Straight. Yeah. It 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 the uh, it's too um, small a pattern. I would say. Mm. It can be bigger. I'm not sure why I'm not painting here, but all right. Anyway, so um, getting getting the light onto you know her back and the bottom of the basket and the side of her tail, I think that helps quite a bit. Um, her hair, I think, you know, you still it could use a little bit more top light and and just specularity in general. Like like all of these tiny little curls should be picking up spec. Mm. You know, especially given how how bright some of this other stuff is, it, you might. I don't know if you need to go into the materials to make that happen. Um, you might. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, I mean, his face looks way better than before. Um, he's got some some shape there. Um, yeah, I think in both cases, like sneaking some spec as if it's bouncing off the water onto them would help a lot. Like, like the underside of his arm is pretty dark. I mean, it's nice that it has, you know, a, some, some range that it, it's brighter on top and it's dark on bottom, but, but the actual level of the darks here is, is pretty dark um, given, you know, all the, all the sort of bounce off the water and caustic stuff that we were looking at in the reference. That would be happening here too. Like there should definitely, it might even be a, like a pretty strong um, spec line, but um, rather than the whole underside of the arm and the whole underside of the of the, uh, the handle being lit up, but you know there should be something. Mm. 
And I would think probably, you know, the, the same thing here. You, you can probably just try bouncing more light up into them, all of them, right? And that should be getting into the into the underside of the hat a little bit, and definitely kind of like a kick on the back of his hair. You know, the boat's gonna occlude some of it, but um, you know, this area should be, you know, specky and, and lit up a little bit. And, you know, hopefully that'll work on her as well, like the underside of her, her hair, picking up a little speck. And I think that's probably the way to get light on her face. Um, you might just have to cheat it like crazy and just put some fills in there. Um, but, uh, you know, like she, I mean, I'm sure she's got some cheek shape and, and like underneath her, her eyebrow, but right now it's all reading completely flat and dark. So, um, spec is probably, the, I would, I would try that okay. sort of un under lighting with spec as if it's bouncing off the water. See, so see what that does for you. Mm, okay. For, for for everybody, both characters, even a right. little bit on the yeah. boat, maybe as well. Just right. try to brighten up the photo, the picture overall. And yeah, I noticed that the the actual dark points of the picture, the hair, is still almost pitch black. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, maybe uh, take a look at the materials. I, I don't remember seeing a whole lot of spec on, on her hair in other people's things, but it, it definitely would help. Because, yeah, I mean, some of these things are, are getting pretty hot, like the tips of the seaweed and, and these pearls or wherever they are. Yeah. I mean, these are blown, actually blown out. So, um, well, Try try spec only light and just move it around her hair and see what happens. Mm, okay. Thank you. Sure thing. Okay, so let's see. Chandler's not here, but let me just talk about his real fast. Okay, hey Chandler, how's it going? So um, yeah, I think you know your the the frequency of your main material on the octopus. I think that's better. Um, the bump level is better. He's a little shiny, um, a little plasticky, but um, that's okay. I don't know if this line has to do with the spec light somewhere that's it's not going all the way around the back or not quite big enough. Maybe um, the tentacles look better overall. <laughs> They do look a little bit like carpet now, which is kind of funny, but at least they're not the those deep craggly things uh, from before. I think that helps. Um, okay, so I mean, I I have some lighting notes for you. I don't know how much time you spent on the lighting. Um, the I think the big thing here is the the cards are very bright, right? And I think you know as we've been talking about in other people's stuff, you kind of want the eyes to be the, the brightest thing in the scene or, or close to or the most noticeable. Usually that does mean brightest, but in, in this case, they're a little blown out. Um, and, and other than this one, you know, a uh, little bit of shadow there, there's really no, no, no sense of the shape of the eyeball. Like it's just totally flat. So either you need to back off or you need to get some an ambient inclusion pass in there and just like darken up the edges a little bit um, so they feel more spherical or you know whatever they are and then um, uh, darken the cards up a little bit so they're not competing with the eyes in, for value and probably the white chips as well just bring them down you might want to bring the felt up a little bit um, and the other thing is the value of the, the cards of the opponent, the foreground cards, and his are very, very similar. So uh, as a read, it's, it's a little hard to tell what's going on. Like it doesn't, the, the frame doesn't naturally break down hierarchically uh, due to value or color. I mean, color for sure, he's red and he, he just pops out. So that, that part works. The, the secondary stuff, Part that, that's partly telling the story, right? Because he's he's playing a game of poker with somebody against somebody, 
presumably, unless that's one of his arms all the way around the back, but I doubt it. So there, there isn't really a sense of, of one person, uh, you know, on, on, the, on the camera side versus uh, the octopus. So, okay, I did do a pan over. And one, one thing I think you could do is you could, you could play with the depth of field a little bit and, and let the, the foreground, the opponent cards, go out of focus a bit. So, I mean, I, I, speaking of vignettes, Michelle, I threw a vignette on here because vignettes help everything, right? And I defocused the cards, and, but brought their levels down a lot, especially his cards, because if you let the, the printed stuff, the darks, uh, get much darker, then it, it sort of changes the feel of, of these cards versus um, the opponent card quite a bit. And, and I went ahead and brought the, the whites down as well. So the chips went down a bit. There's the vignette. Um, and so it's, it's kind of like I vignetted the eyes as well, because you just you need a little bit of shape to those things. And actually, Michelle, just to show you the difference with the vignette. So, I mean, it, it works without the vignette as well. It just works better. Everything works better with the vignette. It's even, you know, sort of drawing your eye to, the, to his face uh, more than his whole head because part of, you know, this, this part's really bright up here. Um, you do that and all of a sudden you're looking back down at his eyes where you should be. Because, you know, I mean, poker, it's a game of, of uh, you know, one opponent versus the other and trying to figure out what's going on. So focusing on the eyes, you know, starts, his, his eye line's a little weird, but I'm not, not sure where he's looking at, but at least it's implied that there are opponents across the table on the camera side. And I think that reads a lot better, you know, when you, when you reinforce the hierarchy. All right, so we will send you that. Um, let's see. Okay, uh, Raghavendra, I, I have your stuff. I didn't get a lot of time to look at it, but it looks it looks much much better. I mean, I think you did a great job uh, drawing out the highlights on her. And this is you know it actually did a way better job than I did in my my uh, paint over because they're they're nice and bright uh, and they and they feel right. You know, I mean, this versus what you had originally. That's my paint over. I mean, it, it, all, all of this stuff is too dusky. So that's what you had originally where she was just, her, her diffuse levels were blowing out. Now her diffuse feels completely in line and she has the additional spec, which is making her feel um, much more natural, much, much, much more natural. And yeah, getting rid of that sky helped a lot. And I think your background work uh, looks a lot better. There's cool where you would expect it and they're still you know, bright and warm in other places. That's nice. Um, yeah, much, much, better job, much, really nice. Uh, you know, I think you might want to play with depth of field a little bit, like this This foreground guy could probably go out of focus a bit. And the far background, given, you know, where we're looking at, could probably get a little softer too. Um, you know, you might want to, this area right here, it's a little bright and it's not the greatest texture in the world. Um, it looks a little gamey. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe just bring this down a bit. And oh, oh the, I mean, these highlights are great. I would love to see some of it, the warm highlights coming into her hair as well. Because, I mean, you've got nice, um, it may still be a little strong, some of these, the, the, the hair light, um, but, you know, it, it adds a lot. I mean, maybe, maybe tone it down a bit, but I think it, it would help quite a bit if you could get some warm hits in there, um, you know, on the key side as well. Um, the whites of her eyes are a little bit bright. I mean, they, sh they should be, you know, the brightest thing in frame, but they look a little blown out. Um, but you're getting some nice, you know, eye highlights in there. Um, maybe her nails, speaking of that, are a little bit bright because they're kind of right up there with her eyes. And especially if you bring the eyes down a bit, these are going to be too bright. So just knock them back a little. 
Um, that's it. I mean, it's looking good. Keep, keep it coming. All right. Uh, I think that that is all that I prepared. I don't recall anything else being posted. Yeah, I think that's it for tonight. Um, I, unless you guys have some questions or anything you want to talk about. Not today. I'm fine. Okay, well, great. Um, thanks for coming and uh, keep your stuff coming. It's looking good. Hope you guys are getting something out of what, what I'm talking about. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll pick this up on Tuesday, same time, nine o'clock Eastern. Thank you. Yep. It's Sorry, actually really helpful. All right. Yeah, bye -bye. thank you. It is.